What's up guys? We are back with another Star Wars Black Series review, taking a look at the latest exclusive that has been getting shipped all over now that we started seeing them appear overseas and then Amazon decided it was time to get this guy moving. So we have finally got our hands on the throne version of Emperor Palpatine. This is the one that we got wind of back at Star Wars Celebration. I kind of drooled over this guy when he was on the show floor and now he's finally in my hands and I'm very much excited to update that older figure with this guy. So we've got him here in pretty much your standard Black Series packaging, just a larger format like we've been seeing with some of the other figures. We do of course have some changes to the packaging, just a little bit though. So you've got the figure in the window, you've got some cutouts on the side for the extra heads, and then you've got that same type of artwork that we see throughout the line. He does not have any number designation at all, and then the back of the package has more of that artwork and a little bit of a bio for the Emperor. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our new and improved Emperor Palpatine figure. Something that actually kind of threw me for a loop once I finally got this guy out of the box because He's not exactly what I expected. He, of course, does have improved soft goods. We've got photo reel heads. We've got the throne. But I guess I really thought that this guy was going to be a little more updated in terms of articulation. Don't ask me why I thought that. I just sort of did. But this guy is almost entire reuse from that original figure. We do have different soft goods. We've got photo reel. We've got extra stuff this time around. But the base figure, the base head, it's all that same figure. So if you're used to that original Palpatine, you know what to expect going in as far as articulation goes. We will, of course, once again see that photo reel makes a humongous difference when it comes to face printing. So let's jump in, take a look at how this guy moves around first. So we'll get rid of this throne and then we will get into all of the changes that we've got when it comes to this new figure. So as far as Palpatine and his articulation and moving him around, he is really well articulated honestly once you get everything off of him because you can remove this outer robe you can pop it off it's got a little clasp up here so you can take it off if you want you can actually you know move him around a little bit more of course he looks ridiculous that way but you can do it. So a lot of his articulation is going to be hindered. And I mean, you, you're probably like me in the fact that you're likely going to be putting this guy on the throne anyway. So he just needs to really be able to sit and he can sit pretty well. But as far as what he can do, you've got an older style disc hinge here at the head. So what the original figure had. So hinge up and down, and then you've got a ball for rotation. The arms can go out and they can rotate at the shoulder pretty far. You have a bicep swivel under there. You've also got double jointed elbows. He's got a uh, lateral hinge on his left hand and swivel, and then you've got a vertical hinge on the right hand and swivel. You've got nothing at the diaphragm. You instead have got the old uh, waist twist, so kind of a ball peg down there. So forward and backward, side to side, rotation. Uh, he does not have the rubber piece for the skirt this time around, though, so he does have a little bit more articulation at the legs. But of course, this is still going to hinder him. So you've got legs that can go out and forward and backward. There is a thigh cut up there. You've got your standard double jointed knees. And then you've got rocker and hinges down at those ankles. So he has pretty much everything that every other Black Series has. And then some because you've got double jointed elbows uh, on this particular figure. So he has a little bit more than some. But most of him is going to be a little hindered just based on the fact that he's covered in cloth and he's covered in these robes, but he can sit down just fine. And if you're wanting an old man to sit on his big chair, well, this guy will do just fine. Now, as far as the overall look and feel here, this is where this figure is, well, he's somewhat different, but he's also very familiar. Even though the soft goods on this guy are different, they're a different cut and just they, you know, are not exactly the same, they still feel very similar to that original figure. And honestly, for the most part, I was never too upset with that original one. He definitely has his drawbacks, but in just standing straight up and kind of looking like the Emperor for an early Black Series figure, he pretty well fit the bill. This guy does ratchet things up a little bit. You do, of course, have some changes, but the underlying figure, like I mentioned, is the same. So you've got the same black pant legs, you've got the black boots, you've got just the black torso with kind of like a robe overlay, and you can see you can pop the uh, the robe right off, and then it, it just fastens back on with this little clasp right here. So you can take it off if you want, but you know, you never see Palpatine without the robe on like that, and of course he would look really goofy. But you've got more paint applications on the hands, so he actually kind of has some, uh, some wash on there to make him look old and nasty on both hands. The other figure was just, uh, was just cast plastic, so there's not a whole lot there. What really sets this figure apart, though, is how these soft goods are 
kind of laid out and how they're stitched and how they're meant to sit and fold on the figure. So to start with, we don't have, of course, the rubber piece for the skirt on the inside of the robe. You do have soft goods. They are limiting with articulation, but if you want him to sit down, it's not a huge thing. You're just not going to have him in the most dynamic poses, probably. No real running poses for old Sheev here. But the rest of the robes work really nicely. They do hang pretty well. They sit a lot better. They don't billow out as much as that original figure, but they do have one weird difference for me, and I don't know, maybe I've never noticed it, but what is going on with these uh, seams on these things? They stick out of the actual holes in the arms, and there's not a whole lot that I can really find to do to hide them. When in the right angle, they look fine, but then if you're looking at it like this, like this thing just juts out here, which I find really, really odd and kind of just goofy looking. The original figure does not have that, and I'll do a comparison between the two uh, here as we go along. So we've got that, but I, but the rest of the soft goods, I think, fit and sit really, really well, and especially when you get towards the head, because instead of it just being a hood that kind of form fits the head on the old figure, this one really kind of silhouettes his face, it hangs forward a little bit better, and it just fits differently. It has a pleat in the back, on the back side back here, to help it kind of sit, fold that fabric a little bit more and sit so he's kind of covered in shadow almost, and you can really only see parts of his face, and that's really what, what they're going for, and I think it works really, really well because that's very much the Palpatine look, but it just folds and drapes his head a little bit more nicely than that original figure, which was arguably one of the biggest complaints, especially with a lot of those older figures, is that the soft goods usually just work wonky, to say the least. And then, of course, you've got the head itself underneath that hood, and you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about when you get close up to, to talk about how it sort of drapes over the head rather than sort of form fits over it. It's not a hat. It's it's a hood for a cloak, and it definitely fits a little better here. It covers him in shadow, and it just makes him look a little bit more menacing, a little bit more evil when you got him this way, and I just think it sits better, and it looks more appropriate. You can, of course, pull it back, and you'll see the head sculpt underneath there, which does, of course, have photo reel this time around. So you've got all of the scars, and you've got the very, very red puffy eyes with our Sith eyes underneath there, and just the very aged and withered look that you're used to when it comes to Palpatine, and I think this sculpt comes through a lot more nicely. This is, as best I can tell, you know, the sculpt from the original figure, so instead of giving us a new head, they just showed us once again that photo reel really does kind of <laughs> really change the entire landscape of what the figure is, and you've got his his hair on the back a little more washed this time around. It's, it's more gray, uh, and it just has a lot more paint up here, so you've got a very, very familiar head sculpt up here with an, a fresh coat of paint, really, and I think it makes a world of difference. I'm not sure this is the head I'm going to use, but if I do, I'm going to have no issues with it. And before we take a look at the throne, let's talk about comparison here. So you've got a pretty good idea of what I'm referring to just by taking a quick look at these two when what is actually different. So there isn't a lot to talk about when it comes to the base body, what's underneath all of these robes, except for the fact that you've got plastic for the robes and you've got soft goods over on this one. But the figure underneath is the same. You've got a little bit more paint applications on the hands, and then you've got different cloaks in terms of their cut and how they're pleated and just stitched together. So you can see this one very much kind of rectangular almost when it kind of goes up and around over the head, and then you've got very big, wide, flat flaps over there, whereas this one is a little softer, smaller, it just kind of drapes over the head pretty nicely, and you can see they're, they're very similar, but at the same time, this one little change with having this pleat in the back definitely has made a difference. And then, of course, you've got the photo reel application on this face, which really, really, honestly, is quite difficult to make out if, if these are the same head sculpt or not. They definitely seem to be, but when I look at them, it very much looks like its own thing because they are so drastically different. This guy is just kind of glossed over. He has a very, very, you know, thousand yard stare look going on with the original Emperor, whereas this one looks more like Ian McDermott in Return of the Jedi. It very much looks like what I think of when I think of Palpatine. So they are very, very similar, but the few small changes that have been made really, really elevate this guy and turn him into something quite different. Now, the throne itself, without a doubt, deserves its own little spot in this review because it is easily one of the things that is drawing people in here. Not just having another crack at the Emperor, not just having an Emperor with photo reel, but having this thing 
That completes a package, really. I don't know about you, but I do not think of the Emperor standing around. I don't think of an Emperor holding a cane most of the time, either. What I think of is either Force Lightning Emperor, or I think of the Emperor in his throne. And this is a perfect way to give us what we want, really. Giving us a way to have the Emperor in his arguably one of his most iconic roles or scenes, because this is what he does. And I think they did a really, really good job with this chair. As you can see, he sits in it just fine. I've had no problems with getting him in or making him stay. He just sort of sits there almost like, you know, it was made for him, kind of hugs him. It keeps him in place. So let's move him out for a second. Talk about the chair itself. There's not a great deal to it. I mean, it's exactly what you think it is. It is the Emperor's Throne from Return of the Jedi. It's mostly just black cast plastic. Uh, it does have a little bit of size to it. So just to give you an idea, you know, throwing the Emperor next to it, it's a, almost as tall as the Emperor himself. It comes up to just around his uh, shoulders, the top of his shoulders, and it looks really nice. It's definitely going to be a centerpiece type of thing for a Black Series shelf. You know, this is one of those things that if you cross lines, you know, maybe pair it with the figure arts throne room diorama, that'd be really cool. Thinking about doing that myself. But this thing just works. It's a big hunk of black plastic. It does have a stand base type thing, so you can rotate it around if you wanted to. But uh, for the most part, it's just a chair. It does have some silver piping up here at the top with some Star Wars-esque doodads on it. And then you've got a couple control panels on either side as well as on the armrests. So it's, it's a kind of basic accessory, but it is an iconic accessory that, again, completes a package for this character and rounds out what is arguably one of my favorite deluxe type sets that we've gotten in quite some time. Now, as far as accessories goes, we've got a few different options here. And just to show you that you can, because again, these are really the same figure, you can use all these extra parts on your original Palpatine if you so choose. So to start with the big things, we've got some Force Lightning hands, which I could not be happier about. I think these look awesome. I have really, really wanted something like this for Palpatine because, well, I mean, it's his iconic move. It's the iconic thing that he does in the movie. So how could you not want it in toy form? Of course, you've got translucent blue plastic that comes out of the fingertips. They are painted nasty and gnarly, just like the regular hands, so they again show some age and some, you know, darkness to them. But you've also got extra heads here. So in order to show you both at the same time, we've got them on both figures. So this guy is the old one, this guy is the new one. And you've got his kind of forced lightning style head, so he's gritting his teeth, he's very much angry, he is very much in the heat of battle. And then you've got this one, which is kind of his happy-go-lucky Emperor Palpatine. It's a very specific thing that I think they're going for, you know, when the camera zooms in on Palpatine's face in Return of the Jedi, and he is very much smiling about what's going on. And I think that's kind of what they're recreating here. So it's more of the same uh, as far as photo reel on both heads. A great detail. I think for my money, the force lightning, the angry head is, is really the best head that we've got. It very much looks like Palpatine in that particular moment. And just the force lightning on its own is awesome. So if you wanted to, you could have maybe your old figure doing the force lightning and your new figure sitting on the throne to have kind of two different looks, which I think is really awesome. It might be what I personally do. And then the last thing that you've got, you've got the cane which also came with the first figure, and he can hold this okay in his right hand. So it's just a, a piece of gnarly black plastic there, but it very much is, is kind of an iconic Palpatine thing, depending on uh, your view of the character. So you've got a lot of options here, and like I said, if you've got both figures, or if, well, if you get another one, you can mix and match them to make different Palpatines to fit your personal display. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this. There's really not a whole lot to gripe about here, especially in comparison to the first figure. That said, I was still surprised to see, and maybe I shouldn't have been, that this was mostly just that original figure. It still works, though. It's not really a negative, it's just more of a thing. Beyond that, my only real gripe is those weird sleeves and how the seams kind of come to a point at the end. It's, it's, it's kind of detracting for me. It's not something that I particularly like to look at. You can hide it somewhat when you've got him on the throne, but it's just it's kind of weird, especially when looking at that first figure. Otherwise, though, you've got a lot of options with this guy. They did improve the soft goods in terms of how they sit. You no longer have the rubbery lower robe, and you've got force lightning hands. You've got multiple heads, and then of course you've got the throne, which 
has to be a huge selling point for just about everybody, just like myself. And it looks great, it works well, and it's gonna make for a good centerpiece on any kind of dark side shelf you've got going. So that's gonna do it for this look at the Star Wars Black Series Emperor with Throne. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time. Thank you.